Thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate that. Thank you, choir, so much for the beautiful song. Of course, we, you know, that's one of our church's all-time favorites that sang today. Thou, Lord, art a shield to me. Well, let's go ahead and open our Bibles to Ephesians 6 chapters. We continue our study in the subject of prayer. We're going to be looking at verse 18 through 20. Now, verse 18 has been our theme verse, but we're going to be looking at the next two verses after verse 18 and in the context of seeing how that prayer is our best resource. Oftentimes, nations are defined by their resource. Saudi Arabia was just a bunch of sand until about 100 years ago. Somebody dug in the dirt, uh, dug in the sand, and uh, discovered oil. And now they're, you know, proportionally, population-wise, they're one of the richest nations in the world. South Africa, the diamonds, and in Africa, the diamonds and the gold that's there. On and on we could talk about resources that nations possess. People define themselves by their resources, how much that they have. But think about it as a Christian. What is our greatest resource? Our greatest resource that we tangibly hold in our hands is the Word of God. But within our hearts, our greatest resource is prayer. Imagine what it would be like if someone told you, I, I know for a fact that in your backyard, there's diamonds and rubies and gold. All you have to do is dig down about five feet, and it's just all over the yard. What would you say? Well, you know, I'm, I'm really busy right now. I got a lot on my plate. You know, I've got kids to deal with and job. One of these days, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to start digging. You may say, what a fool. And you would be right to call that person a fool. In our backyard, in our spiritual backyard, we've got something greater than diamonds, rubies, and gold. It's called prayer. It goes right to the throne room. It goes right to the Father's heart. And yet we ignore it. Yet we ignore it. The purpose of this message is not to make you feel bad. The purpose of this message is just to alert you. And to see what God says about prayer through the Apostle Paul. Let's look and see what it says here. We're going to read verses 18 through 20, and then we're going to come back. I want you to out loud say verse 18 because we're trying to get it into our soul, okay? Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all saints. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth to make known the boldness with boldness, the mystery of the gospel. For this, I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I might be bold enough to speak about it as I should. Notice again, as I've stated before, how often the word prayer or a word that signifies prayer is mentioned in those two verses at least six times. So let's go back to verse 18, try and get it in our mind and soul. Say it out loud with me. Pray at all times in the Spirit with every prayer and request, and stay alert with all perseverance and intercession for all saints. Let's look today and see how that prayer is our best and our greatest resource by way of introduction. Warren Wearsby, as you have heard me quote him several times, prayer provides the energy that enables the Christian soldier to wear the armor and wield the sword. Provides the energy. God's given us the armor. We read about that in the earlier part of chapter uh, 6. But prayer is that which energizes and gives us the strength to use the armor of God that has been given to us. Let's look today and see, first of all, by way of these verses, the character of this resource that he has given to us. What's the character? Prayer provides the energy. What is the resource and the character? What is the character of that resource? First of all, we see that prayer is constant. It is to be constant. Verse 18 tells us and shows us. It says, pray at all times. How does that sound? It, it says, pray at all times. The word all means all. Pray at all times. Constant. First Thessalonians 5, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. We would say this. As natural it is as it is to breathe, so it is for the Christian to have a constant connection with the Lord in prayer. You may say, well, I, I don't know if I can do that. Well, what, what it is, it's a mindset. It's a soul set. It's a heart set. 
where our, our, our heart is close to the Lord. We just sang the hymn, Jesus keep me near the cross. It's that sense in which the Lord is there. He is near. We're aware of His presence. And when we're aware of His presence, when it's time for communication, there's nothing between us. It's not that we're, quote, talking all the time, but we are with Him all the time because He is with us all the time. Pray without ceasing. Don't disconnect because the enemy will bring surprise attacks against you. You'll say, whoa, incoming missile. You didn't see or hear that about to take place. And the person who's not connected to the Lord is going to run for shelter and, and not know how to respond when the spiritual attack comes. We don't need to be surprised, but yet we are surprised that the enemy brings great attacks against us. Now here's what prayer does. If you ever go into the Lord in prayer and uh, you start praying and then your mind just starts wandering away, like, oh, I've got to do this, and boy, so-and-so said this to me and it got me so angry and wow what a great game that was and oh I'm worried about the children or the grandchildren and so you know your mind just kind of goes in different directions and the Bible says in Romans 12 that our mind is to be renewed so what that's saying is we have to get our mindset so that it is close to the Lord and it's close to his heart and as we pray, those distractions, those things that just kind of, you know, are all there, begin to be filtered out. And what it does is it clears the clutter. It takes away uh, the fears. It deals with the distractions so that we can concentrate. Remember when you were in love? Well, someone, some of you right now are in love, but uh, sometimes it gets a little bit, you know, Busy with life after you've been married for a while. Remember how that when you were in love and you were dating, and were you distracted when you were with the soulmate? Were you distracted when you were with your, your, your honey bun, your, your lovely one, your honey bun, your lovely one? And you're like, oh, I just, I just can't keep my eyes off of you. I just love the sound of your voice and everything about you. And so, were there distractions? I mean, you know, uh, there could be a train wreck outside if you were in a restaurant with someone you love. There could be a train wreck outside. You would like, what? what? <laughs> it don't matter. I'm with you. Yeah. The Lord says, do you love me? You see, when our heart's close to him, the distractions are taken care of. So that's the idea behind pray without ceasing. We're right here. Now, does it work? Does prayer work? People say, well, I tried praying and it didn't work. That's like saying, I tried deodorant and it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, after a couple of days, it doesn't work. It wears off. I am a firm believer in deodorant. <laughs> I daily... <laughs> I daily use it. I am, uh, as my wife says, I'm a very productive male. <laughs> uh, even if I'm not doing anything, I'm, I'm very productive. So deodorant, after a while, you need, another, you need another shot of it. And in prayer, it's not that Jesus rubs off, but the world rubs us away from him. And we have to come back and become close to him. Now, the second thing that we see about prayer is not only is it constant, but it is spiritual. Of course it's spiritual. But what do we mean when we say spiritual? Well, it's not a rote routine. Jesus said this, don't babble like the Gentiles. It's not in the number of words that you say. It's in the heart that you have. So spiritual prayer is not in the number of words and the length of time. He says, don't babble like the Gentiles since they imagine that because they have many words. After a while, if you're with someone and they, they, they stop nonstop, constantly, on and on, what happens is you kind of tune them out. And sometimes we get the idea that with God, if we just say something over and over and over and over, that we're going to uh, uh, get there and God said, look, you're, you're, you're being tuned out. Jude, uh, the first chapter, is only one chapter in the book of Jude. Jude says... Uh, in verse 20, that we are to pray in the Spirit. 
Now, when we say we're to pray in the Spirit, th that means this, that the Spirit is working. We have to ask the Holy Spirit. Let me remind you that we are going to be a church. Our purpose as a church is we will live as church members, as disciples of Christ, we will live lives that are led by the Holy Spirit. And when we live lives that are led by the Holy Spirit, there's a fire that burns in us. And prayer is a, is a huge part of that. In the Old Testament, in Exodus the 30th chapter, all right, in Exodus the 30th chapter, he said, all right, when you uh, have the altar, here's what you're supposed to do. The altar was right in front of the veil in the, in the temple. Okay, you got the temple, you got the veil, and you've got the altar. And you put uh, on the altar an incense. Now, it's a special incense. You can go there and read later about the mixture. The Lord was very specific about how the mixture was to be. And so there it was, but it needed something else. And what did this oil and, and the uh, uh, other ingredients that were in it, what did it need? It needed ignition. And that ignition produced the fire. And the fire was to constantly burn. In our soul, we have all the resources, okay? We have the Word of God. We have the church, we have fellow believers, we have everything that we need. But what we really need is the ignition. We need the igniter. We need the propane, so to speak. We need the accelerator, whatever you want to call it. We need the match that puts the fire into our prayer, and that is the Holy Spirit. As we pray, the Holy Spirit comes, and we cannot counterfeit it. You know, we can't emotionally, you know, make it up. There's nothing wrong with emotion, but that's a part, just a part of the mixture. We can't study it up, although that's a part of the mixture. It has to be an ignition that comes from the Holy Spirit. You can pray fervently in the flesh. You can, I mean, you know, that's what the, he says the Gentiles, they, they really get after it. That's not going to work. It has to have the Holy Spirit behind it as He does it. So we are to be spiritual in our prayer. The third thing that we see is we are to be watchful. Notice in verse 18, it says here, uh, again, it says, with every prayer request, stay alert. That means we're to be watchful. Be on the watch. Stay alert. Watch that you don't become unwatchful. Jesus said to the disciples, three of them, as they fell asleep in the Garden of Gethsemane, He said, could you not, could you not watch and pray just for a little while? Uh, because we are to be alert, as I've already told you, the enemy brings, Satan brings surprises our way, and we are to always be on the alert. Parents, that's why it's so important to teach your children spiritual things, to teach your children about the Lord and His Word. And to be aware of how the enemy will subtly and how that he will, in a very pernicious and evil way, attack them. To be watchful, not only for your own soul, but for the souls of others that are around you. Now here's what some people will say. Well, you know, I'm just not in the mood to pray. And if I'm just not feeling it, I'm, you know, if I'm not in the mood, I just... I just don't want to pray. I just don't want to pray. What, what, if, what, what if you treated your work that way? You know, boss, I, I'm just not feeling it today. I'm just not feeling it today. And I don't think I'm going to go to work today. Teacher, I'm just, you know, I know we've got a test, but I, I'm just not feeling it today. I mean, you can just say, I'm not feeling it today. Well, guess what? It's an amazing thing that when we put our heart into something and our feeling is not there, but we put ourselves into it, how that the mood is lifted up. If you put yourself into prayer, here's what's going to happen. You, you say, you know, I'm not feeling it, but I know that I need to be watching out and be spiritually alert. And as you begin to pray, you're going to be amazed at how your mood is going to be lifted. Be watchful because here's what happens. Now get this. Here's what happens. The more I pray, and this is a truth, the more I pray, 
coincidences happen. And the less I pray, the less coincidences happen. Anybody want to identify with that? Anybody else like that? People will say, well, wasn't that lucky? Bless God, it wasn't lucky. It was the hand of God at work. It's not luck. Well, it, how about that? No, it's not about how about that. Is God, as God's people pray, quote, coincidences happen. We need to be watchful because God is in the business in, of moving in unusual ways. The next thing that we see here is this, that we need to be persevering. Persevering, the word persevering means to not quit. Now there is a difference. Now if you'll notice, Romans 12, 12 says to be patient and persistent in prayer. There's a difference between being persistent and persevering. Being persistent means you, you don't give up, you just keep trying. And you know, some people are very persistent, let's say about exercise or about studies and goals that they have in life. And well, we all should be persistent. But persevering has the idea behind it of obstacles that are in the way. When people say you can't do it, when the devil says you're defeated, when uh, the uh, demons try and trip you up and you're, you know that there are things against you, you, in spite of the difficulties, you keep on keeping on. That's the word persevering. Don't give up because I'll tell you this, we have a foe who has many, many followers who are not giving up. And here's what happens. When, we're, when we are persistent in prayer, when we go to the Lord in prayer and we don't give up, God does amazing things. Now, people get the idea, they, they want to say this, and, and I've been guilty of this, you, you have too. How often do I need to keep praying about this? I prayed about it and, man, there must be something going on that I don't know or something's not happening that should be happening. What's, what is the deal? All right, what is the deal? It's not that we are trying to change the mind of God, although God does work in different ways that we can't understand. But when we are persistent, when we are persevering, God is working in our heart in ways that we cannot give an understanding to. God is working and he is preparing our heart. The soil is being turned over. The rocks are being taken out. The thorny bushes that would keep the blessing from coming and taking root in our soil are being removed as we persist and we persevere in prayer. And oftentimes there are things being done that we cannot see. In fact, I can promise you that Oftentimes, the greatest prayers we pray are those that are not answered immediately. Because if God answered immediately, we would become so slack, we would become so lazy, and we would become so ungodly. God just answered all of our prayer immediately. But what's going on is that He is working, preparing the soil, getting rid of the junk, taking away that which would prevent the blessing from being rooted in our soul so that it can produce fruit that will last for all of eternity. Satan says, give up, move on. Nothing's happening here, just, you just got to move on. But I can tell you this, just when you think you should quit, pack up the bags, close the door, and say we're having a going out of business sale, God is about to do something great. Don't give up. You cannot see because, you know why? You can't see around the corner. You don't have the spiritual mirrors or the cameras that can see around the corner. But just around the corner, God is doing a work that you can't see. Persevering. Now, let's look at the objects of these resources. What are the objects? What? Here's what the Apostle Paul said. Pray on behalf of others. Pray on behalf of others. Our, our greatest prayers are prayers for other people. 
Because when we pray for other people, we are moving into a realm of spiritual warfare that when we're focused just on ourselves, uh, cannot, well, you just can't duplicate it. When we go to battle for the saints, for others, there, there's a, a spiritual work that is beyond comprehension. We are to pray for others. A little, little quick poem that someone wrote years, many years ago says this, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest sinner on his knees. He's really, he's not intimidated by our Sunday school classes as long as that's all we do. He's not, he's not bothered by our music as long as that's all we do. And he certainly isn't intimidated by the sermon on Sunday. But let me tell you what absolutely makes him tremble is when saints begin to truly pray. Because he knows that if they're not praying, then the preaching is pointless and the music is just entertainment and the teaching is just knowledge which will puff up. But if saints begin to pray, he knows then that the teaching will then take lodging in the soul and change the heart, that the music will ignite a fire and a pow power and a passion that the world cannot duplicate. And he knows that the preaching will storm the gates of hell and sinners will be brought to redemption. That's why he trembles when the weakest saint is on his knees. You see, bottom line is this, if there's no prayer, there's no power. If there's no prayer, there's no real confidence that God is who He is. If there's no prayer, there's no presence of the Holy Spirit. If there's no prayer, the armor is not energized. If there's no prayer, there's no guidance. If there's no prayer, there is no joy for living the Christian life. If there's no prayer, there is no cleansing of forgiveness. If there is no prayer, there is no concern for the loss. If there is no prayer, then we are left to ourselves and we are lost without hope. Just absolutely lost. But with prayer, all things are possible. That's why Jesus say, we can say to this mountain, be thou removed. So pray for all saints. There are always plenty of people, plenty of needs, plenty of people out giving the gospel. They could use a good prayer. Plenty of people that are struggling with issues. Praying for others, the object of this resource. And why do we pray? Well, that's for the spread of the gospel. The object of this resource is the spread of the gospel. In verses 19 through 20, verse 18 says that I want to make intercession for all the saints. In verse 19, he says, now, you got to get this. I mean, you just got to get this. Pray also for me that the message may be given to me when I open my mouth that I can make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. Wow. If, if, it, if I were Paul, if I were the Apostle Paul, let me tell you what I would say when I pray. I would say, First Baptist Church, please pray that I'll get a favorable ruling from the judge and the jury and that I can get out of this hell hole that I'm in right now. There are people in this prison that are not Christians. And they say some ungodly things. And I'm a man of God. I don't need to be around these lost people and have them taint my pure heart. Pray for me that I will not have to hear the dirty language that's being said in this prison. And these guards here are taunting me making fun of me, and my sensitive soul can't handle it. Pray that I'll get out of this prison. That's probably what I would pray if I was in prison. What did the Apostle Paul say? He never once said, pray I'll get out of here. Never. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. First and Second Timothy, book of Titus. Nope, 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 nope. But what did he say? Pray that I'll be bold. Pray that I, because he said, I've got 
I, I've got a, 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 I have got a prison full of lost souls. I've got men that are chained to me, they're Roman soldiers, and they can't get away from me, and I can witness to them every day. They think I'm a prisoner, they're your prisoner, Lord, because they can't get away from me. Pray for me that I'll have the boldness to speak the mystery of the gospel of the Lord. When, when Jesus was, was with Pilate, I, I love this, I love this part. He's, you know, he's been beaten. I mean, he just is a wreck of a man bodily. He just, he just looks awful. And Pilate says to him, why don't you say something because I have the power to release you and if you'll just give me something I can hang on to, we can make this go away and have a better day. And Jesus said to him, you think you've got the power? You think you got the power? Don't you know that all I have to do is pray to my Father in heaven and he will send 12,000 military special forces angels and if need be come and just wipe you and your puny soldiers out and make you just a big puddle of goo everywhere. That's what I have at my disposal. That's not what this is all about. Let me tell you what this is all about. I've come to die for the sins of the world. And you can't stop me. No one else can stop me from going to that cross. So how do we pray? We don't pray for comfort. We pray for conviction. We pray for courage. We pray that the Lord's power will bring conquest over the sins and the souls of men that are lost without Him. He said that's how we are to pray. God, may God help us to have bold spiritual prayers. Now let's just wrap this up. The conclusion is this. I want to first of all speak from a great theologian, Weston Downing, who said this. That's right, Weston. I saw you on Twitter. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Amen? If you, you need to write that down. You don't need to be looking at me. If you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. The Christian who prays at all times, and he hadn't seen my conclusion, by the way. The Christian who prays at all times never has to worry about getting into the presence of the Lord. He's already there. Now let's pray. Lord, forgive us for our prayerless souls and hearts. Forgive us for how that we have operated in the flesh and done things in our own power. How that we have allowed the resentments and, uh, of life and, and, and the resources of this world to attract us and steal away the joy that you have for us. Now, Lord, how I pray for anyone here today that is lost without you, that they could come to know you, Jesus, as the Savior. Take away anything and everything that is a distraction. Remove all hindrances. Tear down any and every stronghold. Build up the, 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 uh, the, the work of the Holy Spirit within the heart to bring that soul to you. And now, Lord, how we pray that during this invitation time for that person that needs you, that they could come to you today. The struggle that they're going through, break through and give them courage to take that first step, that first word of prayer. Now, if you're here today without Christ, more than anything else, He loves you. Oh, how He loves you. And he has done more than enough to demonstrate that to you. Are you worthy? No. Is he worthy? Yes. He'll bring his worthiness to you, wash you clean, give you a new heart, take away that stone cold heart and give you a new heart that'll be alive unto him. 
Just say, Lord Jesus, remove my sins. I, I, don't, I don't blame anyone else. No one else on this earth owes me a thing. Jesus, you don't owe me a thing. But you have made the grand offer. And while I'm not worthy, you told me I can. So, Lord, I, I give my heart and soul to you right now. I trust in you as to be my Savior. Lord, call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. Would you do that today? If you're here and need to make, as Cliff said, the appointment about baptism, you've already prayed. Come forward and let the church know about that. And we will at the end of the, in a couple of Sundays, have a baptismal time or you want to have prayer with one of us. Whatever God's speaking to you about, I'm going to finish praying and then we'll begin the invitation. Lord, we love you and thank you. Do your work in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing, sweetheart. Thank you so much for tuning into our live stream today. I believe with all of my heart that you experience God's faithfulness and goodness today. You know, the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. If you need to respond to the Lord today, I believe that's real easy. It's called HBO, not the channel, but I believe HBO stands for this. You hear, you believe, and you obey. You just heard the word of God spoken clearly through our pastor today. Do you believe that? If you believe it, then what God is calling you to do right now is to obey the Word. If you need help and you want to talk to somebody, please contact us via our website or our Facebook page. One of our pastors would love to help you in your walk with the Lord. Thank you and God bless you.